Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial and in today's video, we'll be exploring Otter's visibility conditions function. And for our demonstration today, I'll be using this e-commerce starter site called Jewelry Shop. So I'll go ahead and click on the edit button at the top to open up the WordPress editor. Okay, so now we are in the editor and we need to select a block to work with. So I'll just scroll down to find one. And I think we can work with this section block. So on the right hand side, I'll click on visibility conditions. Let's click add rule group. And from there, we'll need to click on this drop down arrow. So that should reveal a few more settings and under condition, we'll access the drop down menu. And now we can see a list of different conditions. They're broken down into different categories as well. So we have users, posts, URL, date and time, WooCommerce and LearnDash. So we can start with users and let's go ahead and select logged in users. So now our block will be displayed if users are logged in. And the opposite would be true if we were to select logged out users. If we select user roles, we'll have different options. We'll need to select the roles from this list. We can select multiple options as well. And we'll then need to select whether the block should be visible or hidden based on the options that we have configured above. Let's take a look at logged in user meta. So you're able to enter a meta key in this field, and then you can select a compare operator from this list. We have true, false, empty, equals, and contain. And if your condition is true, you'll choose whether you'd like the block to be visible or hidden. Next, we have post author. With this option, you'll be able to select an author from this list. And the same process applies to some of the other options under posts, like type and category, with the exception of post meta, which is similar to logged in user meta. You'd have to enter a meta key, choose a compare operator, and choose to show or hide the block if the condition is true. So with query string, you'd be able to enter multiple strings in this field, just have one per line. We can see a UTM tag as an example, and then we can select the condition under which the match will be performed. We have all of the parameters and any of the parameters. Then you can choose if to show or hide the block if the condition is true. Let's view the next option, which is date range. And there we can choose to show the block based on a start date and an end date. We also have date recurring, which lets us show the block based on selected days. You'll just need to check the boxes next to the days on which you want to show the block. For time recurring, you can choose to show the block based on a start and end time. So now we can move on to WooCommerce. Our first option is products and carts. We have this drop down here to select whether our condition should be based on products or categories. So if you select products, for example, you just need to choose your products from this list. And then you can choose to show or hide the block if the condition is true. Let's take a look at the next one, which is total card value. For this one, you'll have to enter a card value in this field and your block will be shown or hidden based on whether or not it's greater than or less than your value. You can also choose to show or hide a block based on a customer's purchase history. All you'll have to do is select a product or multiple products from this list. And at the bottom, just configure your visibility option. And the final option we have is total spend and is quite similar to total card value. You can enter a value in this field and then select a compare operator. So if the customer spends less than or more than that value, then the block will be shown or hidden. So let's take a look at a real example. So let's scroll all the way up to click on logged in users. Now, if we go ahead and update this, the block should be shown only to logged in users. And now I'll just open up the site in a new tab. And since we're logged in, we can actually see the block. And let's try to open our website in a new incognito window as well. In incognito mode, we won't be logged in. So we'll notice that we can no longer see the block. All right, so let's go back to our dashboard. I'll just close these windows. Let's close this one as well. And I'd like to explain also that conditions can be stacked. So here we have two different buttons. We have a delete condition button and we have add new condition at the bottom. So basically we can have multiple conditions working under one rule group. So if I were to select something like user roles, the block will be displayed to logged in users and whichever user role that I select from this list. In this case, this would be editors and contributors. And it's also possible to add multiple rule groups. So I'll delete this one and I can add another rule group. And now the block will be displayed based on the condition set by the first rule group or the second one. So now we can go ahead and take a look at another use case. We'll be using a WooCommerce condition. So let's go to the left hand side and click on the plus icon. And I'll add a reusable block, which is basically a pop up block that I have already designed. So let's click on the list view icon and let's drag the pop up to the bottom. 
and then I'll click on options and I will click convert to regular blocks. It's actually an offer almost like this one, but it's just a simple pop-up. We just have two headings with a countdown timer and a button. So on the right, we can see that the open trigger is on exit. And now we can scroll down to configure our visibility conditions. So let's go ahead and add a rule group. So I'll click on the drop down icon and under condition, I'll scroll down to the WooCommerce section to find total cart value. And let's make the value $50. So I'll just type in 50 and the compare operator could stay as greater than. So I'll click on the add a new condition button and I'll select another condition. Let's select logged in users. So based on this logic, if a user's cart has a value of $50 and they're logged in, then this pop-up will be shown to them. Let's update this page and then we can go ahead and test it out. So I'll click on view page on the left. And right now we're logged in. And if we hover over this cart icon, we can see that we have a cart value of $90. And we'll see the pop-up once I move the cursor outside of the page. Let's see what happens if we remove this item from the cart and we go back to the home page. So I'll just move my cursor outside. We'll see that nothing happens. And I'll go back to the shop to add another item. Let's use this one. Let's click on add to cart. Now we have a cart value of $90. And once we move our cursor outside of the page, we'll see the pop-up. So let's see what happens if we're not logged in. I'll open this page in a new incognito window. And right now we can see that we have no cart items. And let's go to the shop to find another item with a value of more than $50. We can use this one. Let's click on add to cart. Now I'll just go to another random page like about, and since we're in incognito mode, we're not logged in. So once I move this cursor outside of the page, we no longer see a pop-up. So now it's your turn to test out this feature yourself. And if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, leave a comment and subscribe to see more videos like this one. Thank you for watching and see you next time.